Hi guys, and welcome back to Petrolhead Podcast. The Lexus LX has carved out a unique market position within the full-size luxury SUV segment, combining luxury with surprisingly good off-road ability and a reputation for reliability and longevity. However, the LX has always seemed less sophisticated than its European rivals in terms of on-road performance and ultimate luxury. So with a brand new hybrid powertrain and several interior improvements, does the new 2025 Lexus LX 700h finally have what it takes to reign supreme in this competitive segment? Join me as I go through an in-depth comparison to give you the answer. Today, we will be comparing the LX to what I believe are the three best full-size luxury SUVs under the $150,000 price point, namely the 2025 BMW X7 M60i, the 2025 Mercedes-Benz GLS 580, and the 2025 Range Rover P530 SE. Firstly, looking at exterior styling, the 2025 Lexus LX remains unchanged from the previous model year and retains its upmarket and substantial design. Up front, highlights include the slim LED headlights with Lexus's signature blade-shaped daytime running light as well as the massive spindle grille, which is a little too large but works decently. Moving on to the side and the LX's profile includes highlights such as the large wheel arch flares, the tall hood and the interesting rear three-quarter window design. The overall proportions, given the car's short 112.2-inch wheelbase, are not the best, making the rear overhang look too big. Round back, the LX's highlights include the signature Lexus full-width taillights, but otherwise looks rather plain. Moving on to the BMW, which has a controversial front-end design featuring a split headlight setup, which does not look as cohesive as the previous model's single-piece units in my opinion. The grille, which was once the largest in BMW's lineup, now looks more acceptable compared to the iX, and 4 and 7 series models and the lower air intakes also have a strange inward kink. On the side, the X7's profile is pretty plain, with the tall roof line, large glass house and flat surfaces. Round back is probably the X7's best angle, with its slim LED taillights and attractive tailpipes and fake diffuser. The Mercedes has an attractive design. Up front, the slim lights and large Mercedes grille give it great road presence, helped by the aggressive lower bumper design of the AMG line that is standard on the GLS 580. On the side, the gently bulging surfacing adds character to the profile, as does the rounded design of the glass house. Round back, the slim taillights combined with an attractive diffuser layout looks good, although it can be easily mistaken for a Mercedes GLB or previous generation GLC from the back, given they all share similar design elements. Lastly, the Range Rover has an upmarket design. Up front, the clamshell hood combined with the attractive headlights flow nicely into the U-shaped grille, while the horizontal lower grille section also looks simple and minimalist. On the side, the tall hood, the extremely smooth surfacing, the floating roof design and the lack of any visible lines for the window edges creates an extremely modern and sophisticated look, while round back the blacked out vertical taillights linked together by the Range Rover script looks simple and effective, although the lack of visible exhaust tips is a disappointment. Overall, for exterior designs, the Range Rover is the best here, with an extremely minimalist upscale and well-executed design with great road presence. In second place is the Mercedes, which lacks some of the presence of the Range Rover, but is well-proportioned, modern, and looks cohesive. In third place is the Lexus, which has great road presence and good design elements on the side profile, but does not have the best proportions. In last is the BMW, which looks incohesive at the front and has a very plain side profile. Moving on to interiors, and the Lexus boasts a few key updates for 2025 that enhance its appeal. A 12.3-inch fully digital instrument cluster is finally available, in addition to an electronic gear selector. In terms of general design, the Lexus appears busier and less sophisticated than its rivals. The twin-screen central layout with a 12.3-inch infotainment and a separate display for drive modes and other vehicle controls seems redundant, and the lack of a panoramic sunroof at this price point is unacceptable. The infotainment has good software but is not as feature-rich as the BMW and Mercedes systems. Material quality in the Lexus is good, although some parts of the interior do prioritize durability over luxury. In terms of practicality, the LX is on the small side for this segment, with a maximum front row legroom of 41.1 inches, second row legroom of 38.9 inches, and a shoulder room of 58.8 inches in the second row. A maximum cargo capacity of 64 cubic feet behind the first row is also small. 
The BMW X7 has a great interior, blending good materials and excellent technology. The interior design was updated for the 2023 model year and now boasts a curved display setup with a 14.9 inch infotainment and a 12.3 inch gauge cluster under a single piece of glass. The infotainment featuring BMW's operating system 8 is fast to respond and very feature rich too. The design is much more modern than before and the build and material quality are also of a very high standard throughout with a great blend of metal, wood and stitched surfaces. Nice touches in the X7's cabin include the available Sky Lounge panoramic roof and ambient lighting with illuminated M logo. In terms of practicality, the BMW is the smallest for passenger space with a maximum of 39.8 inches of front row legroom, 37.6 inches of second row legroom and a shoulder room of 58.1 inches in the second row. However, the X7 has a massive 90.4 cubic feet of maximum cargo volume behind the front seats the largest of the four cars. The Mercedes GLS 580 has an old feeling interior. The general design is effectively two generations old compared to latest Mercedes products like the new E-Class with the big bezels surrounding the twin 12.3 inch screens. The same cheap feeling air conditioning unit shared with the A-Class and the hard plastic pieces on the bottom of the door cards making the GLS feel less sophisticated than the BMW and Range Rover. There are nice touches though such as the squared off air vents and the off-roader like grab handles either side of the center console as well as the extensive wood trim. The GLS has a good infotainment with the Mercedes MBUX2 system which has excellent graphics and is full of features. In terms of practicality, the GLS is very good with 40.3 inches of front row legroom, 40.2 inches of second row legroom and a shoulder room of 58.5 inches in the second row. A cargo volume of 84.7 cubic feet behind the front row is very large as well. The Range Rover has an opulent feeling cabin. The minimalist and modern dashboard design is combined with excellent materials throughout to create a great atmosphere. Nice touches include the individual armrests for driver and front passenger, the two-spoke steering wheel and the digital rear view mirror. The Range Rover has a modern and sophisticated infotainment with Land Rover's PIVI Pro system on a 13.1 inch touchscreen although it does feel slightly more laggy to use than the systems in the other cars here. In terms of practicality, the Range Rover has 39.9 inches of front row legroom, a class leading 40.4 inches of second row legroom, and a shoulder room of 59.1 inches. A maximum cargo capacity of 83.5 cubic feet behind the front row is very large as well. Overall, in terms of interiors, the Range Rover is the best here, combining an opulent and upmarket design with excellent materials, great practicality and decent technology. In second is the BMW, which also has excellent build and material quality, great technology and very good practicality. In third is the Mercedes, which has good practicality but is let down by an old feeling design and average materials. In last is the Lexus, which has a busy dashboard design, feels slightly less sophisticated than the other three cars and has by far the smallest cargo volume. In terms of drivetrains, the Lexus LX700H has a 3.4 liter twin turbocharged V6 engine combined with an electric motor to deliver a total of 457 horsepower and 583 pound-feet of torque. This is paired with a 10-speed automatic transmission, sending power through a full-time four-wheel drive system with selectable low range and a center diff lock. The Lexus features height-adjustable hydraulic suspension as standard along with adaptive damping and Lexus's multi-terrain select off-road drive modes and crawl control low-speed off-road cruise control system. The LX accelerates from 0 to 60 miles per hour in approximately 5.6 seconds and achieves a combined economy rating of 20 mpg. The BMW X7 M60 has a 4.4 liter twin turbocharged V8 engine with a 48 volt mild hybrid system that delivers a maximum output of 523 horsepower and 553 pound feet of torque. This is mated to an 8 speed automatic transmission and sends power through a rear biased all wheel drive system. A limited slip rear differential is standard on the M60i along with a height adjustable air suspension with adaptive damping and road surface scan, rear wheel steering and active roll stabilization. The X7 accelerates from 0 to 60 miles per hour in around 3.9 seconds and achieves a combined economy rating of 18 mpg. The Mercedes-Benz GLS 580 has a 4 liter twin turbocharged V8 engine with a 48 volt mild hybrid system to deliver a total of 510 horsepower and 538 pound-feet of torque.
This is mated to a 9-speed automatic transmission, sending power through a fully variable all-wheel drive system that can send up to 100% of power to either axle. The GLS comes standard with height-adjustable air suspension with adaptive damping and is optionally available with e-active body control, which uses the 48-volt electronics to independently control each individual wheel and allows the car to tilt into corners to reduce body lean. An off-road package consisting of a special off-road driving mode and additional ground clearance is also available. The GLS accelerates from 0 to 60 miles per hour in around 4.2 seconds and achieves a combined economy rating of 16 mpg. The Range Rover P530 has a 4.4 liter twin turbo V8 with a 48 volt mild hybrid system to deliver a total of 523 horsepower and 553 pound feet of torque. This is mated to an 8 speed automatic transmission sending power through a permanent all wheel drive system. The Range Rover comes standard with height adjustable air suspension with adaptive damping, rear wheel steering, torque vectoring, active roll stabilization, selectable low range and electronically locking rear differential, terrain response to off-road drive modes and an off-road cruise control system. The Range Rover accelerates from 0 to 60 miles per hour in 4.4 seconds and achieves a combined economy rating of 19 mpg. In terms of drivetrains, the most impressive is the Range Rover, which delivers excellent power, torque and acceleration, the second best fuel economy, and is standard with a wide range of both on-road and off-road chassis technologies. In second is the BMW, which has the best acceleration and has the most on-road chassis technologies as standard. In third is the Lexus, which is the slowest accelerating vehicle, but is the only hybrid option here, has the best fuel economy and a lot of off-road chassis technologies as standard. In last is the Mercedes, which has a great engine but achieves the worst fuel economy and is not available with many of the on-road and off-road chassis technologies the other cars have, such as a low-range transfer case or rear-wheel steering. In terms of driving experience, the Lexus has many positive elements. The hybrid V6 powertrain is effortless in its power delivery and has a lot of low-end torque. The engine is very smooth and responsive and is a huge step up from the previous generation's 5.7-liter V8 engine and has better response than the non-hybrid V6 in the LX600 as well. The car has a very soft ride, giving it a relaxed, quiet and comfortable driving experience. Unfortunately, body control is seriously lacking in the LX, with the most body lean in corners of the four cars and a lack of any sportiness to the driving experience. The steering is also vague compared to the other cars. The BMW X7 is the polar opposite of the Lexus. The 4.4 liter V8 engine is extremely impressive, offering incredible acceleration and response and sounds great too and is mated to an excellent 8-speed transmission. The stop-start in the X7 is also very impressive, being incredibly smooth and unobtrusive. The driving experience of the X7 is excellent, with great body control. The rear wheel steering, active roll stabilization and air suspension work together to deliver excellent agility through corners and a rear biased and playful feel to the experience. The ride quality is also good, with good bump absorption, although it is ultimately not as softly sprung as the Range Rover, and the ride can get slightly jittery in sport mode. The X7 is very quiet at speed too, making it a relaxed highway cruiser. The Mercedes GLS 580 has a good blend between comfort and sportiness. The 4-liter V8 engine is smooth and responsive and has excellent low-end torque, although it does not feel as athletic or sporty as the BMW, particularly given the 9-speed transmission is not as quick to shift as the 8-speed in the X7, and the start-stop is not as smooth as the BMW's. The car is softly sprung and feels comfortable on smooth surfaces and the cabin is quiet, but not as quiet as the BMW or Range Rover. The steering is reasonably responsive, although it's not as direct as the BMW's. However, there are too many side-to-side -side body motions in comfort mode and in sport mode. The ride becomes too jittery for a luxury SUV, although it does feel surprisingly athletic and buttoned down and is more sporty than the Range Rover and Lexus. The Range Rover has similar driving dynamics as the Mercedes. The 4.4 liter engine is sourced from BMW, although it is a last generation engine compared to the X7. Regardless, the engine has similar characteristics as the BMW, with very smooth and linear power delivery, and is paired well with the 8-speed automatic transmission, but the start-stop is not as smooth as the BMW. The ride quality of the Range Rover is arguably the best of the four cars here, with a pillowy feel and good bump absorption. The cabin feels very quiet as well, although not quite as quiet as the BMW. 
However, it too has a lot of body roll and side-to-side -side motions, even more so than the Mercedes, and is not anywhere near as sporty or well-controlled as the BMW. The active roll stabilization and rear steer help it handle decently, but the Range Rover is ultimately still very tall and heavy, which limits its agility. Overall, for driving experience, the BMW is the best vehicle here, combining a sports car-like engine with the best body control, good driving dynamics, and decent ride comfort. In second place is the Mercedes, which strikes a decent balance between comfort and sportiness, but has more body motions than the BMW and is not quite as soft as the Range Rover. In third place is the Range Rover, which has a very smooth engine and the best ride quality, but the trade-off is a lot of body lean and a lack of any sportiness. In last place is the Lexus, which has good ride comfort but feels the least confidence-inspiring with vague steering and the most body lean of the four cars. So overall, which is the best three-row luxury SUV of the four cars? Personally, the best vehicle here is the BMW X7. It combines excellent practicality, great interior materials and technology with an impressive engine and transmission, a lot of standard chassis technologies and the best body control of the four cars and a good ride quality. The styling is divisive, but if you can look past that, the BMW delivers the ultimate all-round package. In second place is the Range Rover. It has the most imposing styling, the best interior and ride quality, an excellent engine and a lot of on and off-road chassis technologies as standard. However, the lack of body control compared to the BMW and Mercedes detracts from the driving experience and makes it not as good of an all-rounder as the X7. In third place is the Mercedes. The GLS has a good blend of comfort and sportiness, but is ultimately not as accomplished as the X7 in this regard, is lacking in chassis technologies, and the interior does not have the best materials and feels dated. In last place is the Lexus. The LX has an impressive new hybrid powertrain and excellent off-road features, but suffers from the most body lean of all four cars and has an interior that doesn't feel as modern and upmarket as the other three cars. So what do you guys think of this conclusion and what are your thoughts on these four full-size luxury SUVs? Let me know in the comments below. And as always, please like this video and subscribe to my channel to be the first to see more amazing content like this in the future. Cheers!